And nope. maybe if let's see. Way if only I knew how I had stopped it. Well, guys, I think we may just have to talk. And, uh, hey, Rachel. Yeah. Rachel. Mm -hmm. Try going into participants, the setting in your settings where it says participants. Yeah. And then um, it should click something. It should say more. And then that should show you the settings that you have for us. Okay. All that I show is mute all and ask all to unmute. Now That's it. Right. You don't here. see anything about cameras, mm -hmm. video. And I'm seeing... See, when you're in or if you can slide it. See if I can slide it? Yeah, when, when you're in more under participants, if you can slide okay. that and see more than just the, the unmute. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. This is so weird. Never have I ever. Okay, so it is recording and I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Well, okay. Are you on your phone, Rachel? I am. Okay, so if you go to more and you go uh -huh. to meeting settings. I go to more and I go to meeting settings, okay. Okay, so under mm -hmm. meet, you clicked on meeting settings? Yes. Okay, and there's those all those toggle buttons is what uh, Karen was yep. talking about. Mm -hmm. um, do any of those toggle bu buttons make sense for like show name when participant joins, show non-video participants? They're all turned on. So I'm wondering if one of them, the so stop incoming video, I wonder what that is. That I have turned off, but let me try that. Let's see. Okay. I wonder if that was it. And I wonder. No, if that, that didn't work. I'm still getting the same message. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So try maybe the. Um... Hmm. <laughs> well, that's time. yeah <laughs> well okay i'm just gonna get started this is what okay. we've got i can <laughs> hear you fabulously i just can't see your beautiful faces which makes me sad but i'm just gonna roll on because that's what we do and i can see the chat on my computer and pretty soon we're going to be looking at my share screen and my slides, and we're not going to see each other anyway. And so there you go. <laughs> it is what it is. And um, that we'll just work with this. So, okay. So at 609, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm really thankful that you've chosen to join us as we discuss how to preserve and reclaim your joy during this holiday season or when you can't figure out your Zoom settings. Yes, still applies. <laughs> so once again, grab your pencil, your piece of paper. You're going to need them for a couple of activities that I'll lead you through tonight. And one of the things that I know this time of year is that we really just have a gauntlet to get through us. 
And when I think about a gauntlet, I really think about like the medieval type of, you know, there's swinging like hammers and there's this little path that you like have to scurry down and there's things that are dropping and things that are swinging in different directions. And like we're ducking and bobbing and we're trying to get through it all. And that is how the holiday season can really feel to me. If you have ever felt that way during the holidays, I'd love for you to drop an amen or a yes ma'am in the comments. Um, some of the things that come at us are time changes and then Thanksgiving and then the shopping for or creating of gifts. We have the shortest and the darkest day of the year, which emotionally impacts us, as we've discussed in lots of other classes. Um, Christmas, then we roll into New Year's, and it's just like we're running, ducking, rolling. I see a couple of amens in here, and the hits just keep coming. Like, it doesn't wait for anybody. Things are in motion, and they're swinging, and boy, you better get with it. Cindy says, yes, indeed. <laughs> That'll work, too. Thanks, Cindy. So I just have to tell you that that gauntlet, when I think about that medieval thing, um, if you lose your footing, help. <laughs> you get knocked off and onto the ground, and that is the way this feels too. Like if you miss a step in this process, you lose your footing and you're just knocked off course. And it is really hard sometimes for us to course correct. So I really know that if you are here tonight, it's because you are very interested in staying on course, or if you're already into. Ooh, this is starting to build up, starting to feel pretty stressful, and I am not for this, that you are here to start to course correct and be able to have some peace and reset. So here we go. Um, really, this season is about being able to daily even experience peace, joy, goodwill. These are the things that we talk about and that this season um, is supposed to be all about in theory, but what if we could actually be doing those things? And even when we gather with family and friends, we can actually enjoy that time with them, despite maybe some prior losses in life, despite maybe conflict or challenges with certain personality types at those gathering, whether it's you know, family get-togethers or work get-togethers that we can really start um, to stay peaceful and connected um, with, with those who are around us. So I'm going to go in really quick and mute everybody because I was hearing a little bit of feedback and then we'll go on. Okay, so I'd like to start tonight with a stress assessment. Doesn't that sound great? Aren't you glad you're here? <laughs> you should be because when we have good information, we can make better choices. And that's what this stress assessment is about. The other thing that you need to know with this stress assessment is that you, the more honest you are, the better information you get to. So we're, you're going to start by rating yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 on the different items that I'm about to put up on the screen, with 1 being it is never true of you, and 10 being it is always true of you. Now, since you don't actually have this little assessment in front of you, you can just make a list. As I, I'm going to read each of them to you, um, or you can look on the screen. You're just going to write your number between 1 and 10. 1, never true of me, um, or you could even give yourself a 0 if you're just, like, perfect in that area. Um, or 10, like, oh, my goodness, this is always true of me. I really struggle with this. I want to encourage you. Go with your gut response. Do not overthink this. Um, because as soon as you start to logically analyze and process it, you're really not getting an, your most honest and true response most of the time. So as I read these, I'm going to give you a very short amount of time to respond. Write your number down and listen for the next one that I share with you. Because I want your genuine response, which is typically your first one. Um, so. Here we go. Let me share my screen. And here is the assessment. Okay, 
So from one to 10, the first thing that I want you to consider is do you struggle with brain fog? One to 10. Allergies, one to 10. And that can be any kind of allergy, skin, food, um, different kinds of reactions. Migraines, you struggle with migraines, one to 10. Hormonal issues, one to 10. Breathing issues, okay, this might be like, you've noticed that sometimes you hold your breath and you just do that unconsciously and then you're like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe. What, uh, why do I do that? Or it may be like this really shallow breathing that you do and then you're noticing that again, you feel out of breath and maybe even have some headaches because of that shallow breathing. So breathing issues. Next up are heart issues. Do you ever notice your heart be racing, or do you have palpitations, or have you had other diagnosis um, related to your heart? Then the next one up would be endocrine disruption, and a lot of times this shows up as fatigue or just feeling weak and like you can't do something no matter how hard you try, like you really want to, but you just can't get up the gumption to get it done. And last, sleep. And do you feel rested? One, I never feel rested. 10, dang, I sleep good. There ain't nothing that interrupts my sleep. <laughs> okay? All right, so you've got your list of numbers on this stress assessment. And I want you to tally them up. And if you're really, really, really brave, I want you to put your score in the chat if you're really brave and we're going to look at what your different scores might mean next okay so if you scored 0 to 24 it's likely that you are aware of what brings stress into your life and you are proactively managing your personal exposure to stress by using products that support peace and relaxation and result in greater joy if you scored 25 to 40, you may be beginning to experience the impact of stress collecting in your body. And your body is doing its job in mitigating the severity of your symptoms, like it's helping to compensate for the stress in your life, which is what it was created to do. But you should be aware and increase your awareness of the impact and consider how you could start making some changes in your life to support your body's stress responses. Okay, if you scored 41 to 64, I'm seeing some numbers. Look at you brave people pop up in the chat. And I'm not gonna say them out loud. I'm gonna make people go look for them <laughs> if they wanna see what they are and how they compare. But good job, thank you for sharing those. If you score 41 to 64, it's likely that your body is very tired. That is the impact that stress has on us. You haven't been aware of these issues or maybe you've been ignoring them. Maybe you weren't even completely honest in your assessment just now. Maybe there's things you haven't thought about before. And we know that our body keeps the score. Your body internalizes everything that happens. Even when we get through it and we think, oh my goodness, it's, it's done. If there were emotions there that we didn't process and release, we're not really done until we've taken the time to release those negative emotions. So it's time to honestly assess your emotions and stress levels and make a plan for how you're going to support your emotions. Now, if you scored 65 to 80, your body is begging for support. It has worked hard to protect you and you should be an emotional in emotional ICU. Like we should have you in a little capsule where we protect you at all costs because you're running out of steam and you really can't keep going for very long if you're at this level. You need to take immediate and comprehensive action to help alleviate the ongoing strain of exposure to stressors by identifying what you can and can't control and then make a plan of action 
to immediately implement. Okay. Some of you have likely been training all year with some of the strategies that I'm going to share with you tonight. I can see that from your scores. I didn't see anybody that was in that upper range of 65 to 80. So woohoo! you must be using some of the things that we talk about each week. And that is awesome. So tonight may be just simply a process of reactivating some of your past knowledge, things and skills that we've talked about before. It may be validation of things that you are getting right and you deserve to pat yourself on the back because you've learned some skills to really take care of yourself emotionally throughout the year and that really becomes important during the holiday season. Or you might think about, if this is brand new to you especially, what is one thing you could add to your wellness routine so you can continue to fully step into wellness? one step at a time. So if you're just getting started, some of you may be thinking, well, stink. Now what am I going to do? I'm just going to have to suck it up and hope for the best. And I'm telling you right here, right now, that is not the strategy that we want. Suck it up and hope for the best is one of the worst things we can do to ourselves emotionally. So we're actually going to begin with just some baby steps. And I want you to know that if you're just starting, with these baby steps, these could perhaps be some of the most important steps to get in place. So be gentle with yourself. Start easy. Be proud that you're here and do not compare yourself to others or keep shame on yourself that you're on step half, maybe step one, when others are on step 10 or 20 or maybe far beyond that. There are a wide variety of steps. Don't despise the one that you're on, okay? Those things aren't welcome here. No shame, no comparison. You're at where you're at and you're here and that's good, okay? All right. Here's what I want you to think about me with. Kind of a crazy scenario. Um, and I'm calling it the crazy car caper, okay? Now, we could also maybe call it the crazy car conundrum or the crazy car problem or the crazy car scenario, whatever you want to call it, okay? But it's your car. Well, it's your um, hypothetical, hypothetical terrible of a car. And because it's your car, I'm going to need you to take some ownership <laughs> and think about some real solutions in this crazy situation. Um, like, seriously, I want you to think about if this is a real scenario, what would you do, even though this is going to sound crazy, okay? Just roll with me. Roll with the crazy. Okay, once upon a time, <laughs> you lived in a highly populated area of a city that literally had only one place open for you to park your car. I visited some of these places, I think, in my life, some of these cities that I'm like, where the mess do these people put their vehicles, okay? But for whatever reason, you choose to live in this place, and the only spot that is open for you to park your car is actually, um, really, it's a car crusher. But it has hydraulic arms on it. They keep it open. And so you don't really have to worry about that, even though it is kind of a little eerie to, like, park your car in a car crusher. It is the only place. And so you have to park your car there in this highly populated place that you live. Okay? Okay. Those are the rules. Now, <clears throat> there is very bad news that you get. And the bad news is that this winter, there are going to be colder temperatures than you have ever experienced. And so for this season, there is a chance, a very good chance, a scientifically founded chance, that when this cold weather hits, your hydraulic arms, um, the hydraulic fluid that keeps them open, is going to cool to the point that it can't keep them open and it slowly closes, okay? Now, remember, you're supposed to be thinking about a solution to this, all right? Now, let's just say, you know, keep in mind, there's a heavy steel plate across the top of this. It's going to get to a certain temperature. It's going to slowly start to close. It doesn't just bam close. It's a slow closing. And, um, you know, there just isn't any other place in town to park. And so you're having to 
stop and think about how to protect this necessary asset. Okay, what are you going to do to protect this asset? And um, I'm gonna stop screen scares. Screen scare, <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> screen share for um, just a second. And I just want you to think about this, this crazy situation and what your solution might be. Okay, now I'm going to share a total wackadoodle solution that we will be able to clearly see is a hot mess waiting to happen. Um, while you, if you have a solution, put it in the chat. Okay, so here's my wackadoodle solution. Um, let's say that the only solution you can think of as you rack your little brain is, okay, I'm going to lay on my back on the car. And I'm going to push up with my legs against that platform, and I'm going to keep it off of my car, okay? Now, I'm going to have to vigilantly, vigilantly monitor temperatures daily. I will need to be on the scene um, as soon as temperatures start to drop to keep that off my car, that steel plate off my car. And, um, of course, we know temperatures fall at night, but they rise in the morning. So, you know, I'm only going to maybe have to be there for a few hours. And and it does, you know, the good news is that that pressure is lost slowly. So when the temps are dropping, you've got time to get there. And, um, and if I've been holding up super long and I need to go run and get some food, I can do that really quick and I'll just run back as quick as I can. Or maybe I'll take my little protein bars to eat because I lay there with my legs. Or... Um, bathroom well yeah that'll have to be quick trips too but you know you can make it work i can make this work i can totally make this work yeah it's a little bit of pressure but i can totally make this work and, and hey hey let's make some lemonade here with these lemons you know sometimes i have a hard time getting to the gym this will be leg day it'll be great i will make this great it's two birds one stone i'm doing great um, we'll just see the positive in everything that's happening here, right? Holy moly. <laughs> um, no, this is wrong. I think you can clearly see the solution is really no solution at all. And uh, let me see. Surely some of you had better solutions. Nobody. I don't have any solutions. Okay. I need some help because you just heard my quackadoodle solution. Cindy Brown, thank you, Cindy, says, sell my car and use public transportation. <laughs> Good play. Okay, so Cindy's thinking outside the box, or should I say outside of the car crusher. Um, <laughs> Becca says, because she's my father's daughter, <laughs> my sister, find a way to heat the hydraulics. <laughs> okay, so she's thinking about outside the box ways to solve this too. Um, you know, here, here's the truth as some of you look at this. Um, solar powered heater to come on. <laughs> okay. My solution is based on surviving. It's not based on thriving. It's not even remotely based on taking care of myself. It's completely focused on just a car. And we can all see the hundreds of ways that this would take a toll on our bodies, mentally, physically, in every single way. This isn't a solution. It's pure stress. And I'm trying to put a positive spin on it. Oh, it'll be leg day. Oh, it'll be this or it'll be that. It's repackaging, but it's still stress. Like, I haven't gotten rid of the stress. So one of the things, I, there's no joy here. There's no hope for joy here. And we can clearly see that in this car example. But many of us do some of these same types of mental jostling daily, monthly, or annually in our own lives, things that only come once a year. It's just once a year. Like, you know, it's just for the season while it's cold. Like, we'll just do this every year. But the truth of the matter is, um, when we have to make up all these additional rules, all these exceptions to get through just a holiday season, um, those things come at a cost. And they aren't living in freedom or in joy. They're living in bondage and misery. And you, my friends, were not meant to live in bondage or misery. 
And you know, some stress that's in our life, um, we can remove it as we identify solutions. Um, like uh, Cindy's idea about sell the car, just get rid of it. This isn't worth it. Great solution. Some things, sometimes, some stress, we can just get rid of it. Find a different solution altogether. Um, or maybe somebody might say, I'm just going to move. Like, I don't need to leave, live here anymore. This isn't worth it. But there are some things in our life we truly can't get rid of. Things like family. <laughs> okay, we can, but that would be messy. And, and we don't really want to get rid of family um, most of the time. There's work expectations. You know, we, we need the job. We need to keep the job. There's expectations here. They may cause a lot of stress in my life, especially in the holidays when I'm juggling so many other things. Um, there's also physical conditions, things that have happened to my body that I know better now and I'm starting to heal, but they're still part of my journey. They're not completely gone yet. And so what can we do to reduce this stress, reclaim our joy, especially in this holiday season? First and foremost, I just need you to know that whatever step you're on, it is very important that we stay mindful of the basics, especially when life is stretched thin during these holiday seasons. We need to recenter with simplicity and we must do it over and over and over again. Like we don't just get to recenter with simplicity one time in life. I wish that were true. I would be a liar if I told you that. Um, this isn't a one and done game. It's a continual as long as our time on this earth remains, I'm in it for the long haul game. And so learning some of these strategies for stress management, oh, the sooner you learn them, the more years of life you have to practice, to refine, to get better, and to experience more freedom and joy. So there is a huge payoff for beginning to learn some of these skills. And you will experience those payoffs emotionally, physically, spiritually, relationally, financially, in every area of your life if you'll just take the time to slow down and do these things, okay? Our bodies are meant to operate in balance, and our health really flows into and out of these areas. So I'm going to start the slideshow back up because ultimately... The um, the cro there's cross nourishment between these areas. Okay, there's that. Here's this. Um, our balanced cross nourishment is vital for ourselves and then for others. What are the basics of health? Well, I call them the three stepping stones, and you can see them here in these little overlapping circles. These strategies for reset include our physical, spiritual, and emotional health. And ultimately, those things cross over. And you can see in this diagram that as those things are balanced in our life, we also have relational health that flourishes. Okay, They really breathe into and flow into and out of each other. We are integrated beings. And where we like to, in Western medicine, Western science, examine just one thing at a time, that's not really how the body works. Everything flows into and out of each other. So we're going to start tonight by looking at our spiritual health. Step one. Now, this is a very abbreviated version of a class that I do um, called Stepping into Wellness. And so there will be some extra things on some of these slides because I've just stolen slides from that class and kind of abbreviated this information. But um, anyway, just know that that's where this comes from. So our three steps are spiritual, physical, and emotional. And our journey, our mission is to move into a balanced and thriving life full of purpose, joy, and vitality to take each of these steps one at a time and keep them in balance. When any one of them gets out of balance, we get pulled in, in a different direction and things do not move in a nice and stable sort of way in life. So with your spiritual steps, the first thing that you need to do is really be intentional 
to schedule and, and proactive to schedule a twice daily pause. Now, this can be anywhere from five to 10 minutes in the class with the daily pause um, for stepping into wellness. We talked about setting aside with intentionality, 10 minutes to pause. And since I'm a believer, I call this my Jesus time. But if you aren't a believer, you can still practice mindful pauses and breathing techniques. We're going to talk about those some more in just a minute. And during these times, it's important to pray, to forgive others, to release any hardship that may come to your mind. And one of the key ingredients for this to be successful is that I use my Valor essential oil to help declutter my mind and increase my ability even to notice those things, to hear from the Lord, and to be able to release them. So here's my question for you. You can respond in the chat. Um, whatever you may call it, do you set aside time daily for a pause? Do you make them happen once or twice a day? And um, maybe what do you notice about yourself when you do make time for that pause? You can put that in the chat. I'll check, check it here in just a minute. Step two is the physical step. And um, almost all of these things that we're going to talk about in the physical step um, that keep us grounded and rooted in being um, well and having healthful practices through this crazy season. Um, this helps to bring us back into an alignment, back into who we truly are. Um, almost all of these are free, low cost, no cost. And that's what I love about some of these tips that I'm sharing with you tonight. So for your physical health, just a reminder, you may already know this, but let's reactivate you can assess, am I doing the things that I know I'm supposed to do? Okay, so first off, sleep. Are you getting seven to eight hours, as is ideal for most adults um, that are around the age that are on this call? Or if you're a parent, are you setting a time aside enough time in your holiday schedule that your children have opportunities to sleep even up to 10 hours? We want them to be happy little participants in these activities. It's not going to happen if they're tired. <clears throat> I want me to be a happy little participant in these activities. And it is very hard for me to do that if I am tired. Okay? Um, so you can use all natural, non-addictive non sleep support. And we have taught multiple classes on that as well. So you could reach out to the person who invited you tonight if you need some extra help, especially during the holiday seasons with sleep. Um, my top two recommendations, I love to use lavender and cedarwood in my diffuser. I love to use rutabella on the bottoms of my feet. If you've tried some of those things and sleep is still escaping you, reach out to the person who invited you tonight. Next is your water intake. How are you doing? For me, I know I was busy getting ready for this class tonight, and one of the first things that happens is my water just goes out the door. I just am so in, in, enmeshed in what I'm doing that I forget. And um, if I had just set this on the desk as I was working today, I would have done better with that goal. So remember, a minimum of half of your body weight in ounces of water. Here's to you. <laughs> um, next up sunshine. Um, 15 minutes of sunshine as early in the day as possible. We've also talked about no sunglasses so that sun gets into your eyes and you can manufacture vitamin D. It helps to regulate our wake and sleep cycle. So this kicks into getting good quality sleep, helps to produce our um, happy hormones. And listen, sunshine is free unless you need to invest in a sun lamp. Like if you live in one of those areas of the country where there's darkness for long periods of time, or if you notice you're just not yourself um, during these shorter, darker days, or perhaps you even suffer from um, SAD um, or depression. Um, SAD is seasonal affect disorder, and that's people who, based on the seasons, less light, you might struggle with feeling gloomy and dark and just not yourself. Um, you should totally check out some of those some of those resources so next is movement okay so 
15 minutes a day of movement, whether you're walking, biking, dancing, in the kitchen, just getting your groove on, okay, swimming, just get it moving, get your blood pumping, helps to oxygenate your brain, and it also helps to flood your system with more of those happy hormones. If we want to experience joy, let's get our hormones on board with that too, okay? Nutritional supports to keep on hand. Um, let's look at nutrition. So I love to tell people, eat the rainbow. When you go to the grocery store, think about the rainbow. Like, I need something red, something orange, something yellow, something green, something blue. Like, going through your produce. And I'm talking about natural colors. I'm not talking about going and, <laughs> and buying fruity pebbles. That's not the rainbow I'm talking about. <laughs> okay? Put those pretty rainbow colors of fruits and veggies in your cart as much as you can, and you'll be experiencing a wide variety of vitamins and minerals just by doing that. Um, quality food really is our first medicine, okay? Then next, when it comes to nutritional support to keep on hand, um, Young Living's Ningxia Red, just one to two ounces of that daily is what I use as my liquid whole food vitamin. And I absolutely do two ounces, sometimes more, if I feel like my body is starting to fight something this time of year, if I have a sore throat, if I start to have a little cough or a little tickle, um, I'll kick that on. <laughs> Fruity pebbles. Thanks, Mark, for laughing at my joke. Okay. So then last in your nutrition component is your probiotic nightly at bedtime. Your immune system is largely in your gut, and your mood is also connected to your gut health. So... If you're wanting to experience more joy, take care of your gut health. Help your body, help your mood. Um, these things all interact. So question for the chat, which component of the physical step is already part of your daily practice? And which one do you think could help you the most if you added it today? Okay, all I see so far is fruity pebbles. Thank you, Chef Mar. <laughs> um, so if you have something I'm looking to see, anybody already doing one of these physical health steps and feel like you're just nailing it, which one's already part of your daily practice? Or what's one or and what's one that you could start doing that would benefit you the most if you started it right now, today. I'm looking to see. Okay, need to add more movement. Me too. Again, today, um, I was busy getting ready for this, and finally at about 4.30, okay, I didn't get my 15 minutes of sunshine this morning. Well, I did. I went out to feed horses, but it wasn't 15 minutes. Um, I told Brian today at 4.30, I'm like, I have to take a break. I have to go for a walk. I've got to move. And I just, I need to be done preparing. I have to go move. I know it's good for my body. It's good for my brain. Let's go. And so we did. We bundled up. It is cold here today. And just got out to get some movement in. Okay. Becca says, more water. So hard when temperatures are cold out for me. Hey, here's my hack. Somebody taught me long ago. Um... I started to realize it's not really coffee that I want. It's actually something warm that I want. And so this person said that they just drink hot water. And so that sounds maybe kind of gross at first. But I have to tell you, once you get used to it, I mean, it really is the hot beverage that I want that's soothing, that warms me up on the inside. And so I'll just put water through my coffee pot, force me coffee, and just have hot water sitting in the coffee pot. That's part of my movement too. I get up, I walk around the house, I go get my hot water, I sip it, I bring it back to my head, to my, to my desk with me. So yeah, Becca, I heard that too. It's a comfort flavor in the winter for me. <laughs> okay, I get it. I totally get it. But I'm telling you, and then that dandy stuff, Donnie keeps telling us about dandy. Um, I do split some of those in there too. Um, let's see. Nikita says more water. Chef Mar says I need to work on sleep. All others doing okay. Go Mar. Uh, more water and movement. Nutrition. Um, comfort flavor that's different for coffee. Yeah. 
uh -huh. you need to get a different association with your brain deeper <laughs> of what's comfort and what feels like, oh, I'm settling. I have a nice warm beverage. But I'm telling you, I was able to do that with just plain warm water. So you might try it. Okay. So the third stepping stone is the emotional, um, emotional step. And as we say all the time around here, our at least 90% of illness begins with an emotional imbalance in the body. And for this reason, it's imperative that we train our body to release those negative emotions and to hold on to the good emotions. One of the best ways that we can do this is with simple breathing techniques, okay? We don't need something big and fancy. God has given us everything we need to be well. And most of these tools are just simple, simple tools. If we'll remember them and use them. And thank you, friends, for going back through, especially those physical health things together. Just talking about those things brings them back into our conscious awareness and gets us doing them. These simple things that we need to do for our wellness. Okay. So breathing oxygenates the brain back here on the emotional step so that we can think clearly. And we know if we've been around at all that it interrupts the amygdala, which is our emotional stress response. It interrupts that and jars it and takes us out of just reacting into being able to think and make a clear decision. So we like to use, and I like to teach people about the four, seven, eight breathing technique. And the way that that works um, is that you, you can see on the bottom of this slide, place a drop of authentic essential oils in the palm of your hand. You then rub your hands together, cup your hands over your nose like you see in this picture, inhale for four seconds, hold for seven seconds, and exhale through your mouth like you're blowing out a candle for eight seconds. It is a very firm exhale, okay? And the reason why this is so powerful, if you can learn to do this consistently, I use it during my spiritual step. Like I put those two steps together. So when I do my daily pause, I also do this breathing technique at the same time. So here's what you, some of the benefits that you are going to experience. Um, an immediate sense of calm, improved focus and ability to concentrate, better sleep and an easier time falling asleep and staying asleep, decreased muscle tension, improved cardiovascular stamina and heart rate variability, improved blood pressure, and improved symptoms related to common breathing conditions such as asthma, COPD, etc. And last but not least, improved digestion, which is with as crazy as many of us eat during the season, is not the least of our concerns. <laughs> okay, so four, seven breathing technique. Grab you a bottle of oil. Almost any oil will do and get after it. Look at the benefits just waiting for you if you'll just take the time to pause twice daily, five to 10 minutes. Do some breathing and some relaxing, okay? Then last but not least in this emotional, as needed, we talk all the time about stress away essential oil throughout the day. Whenever your peace is disturbed, breathe it in, connect with the Lord, choose to release the stressor. This is a season to truly become a noticer of yourself. Notice when you no longer feel peaceful. Yes, this is a crazy time to start this if you haven't done it before, but I'm here to tell you it's also a fantastic time to start this because you will have opportunity after opportunity after opportunity for practice, a lot of practice, a lot of immediate feedback, multiple times a day that you'll go, oh, I didn't handle that so great. I think maybe if I just taken five minutes earlier in the day, maybe I would have been more ready for that interaction that came at two o'clock or whatever it is. So be a noticer of yourself. Um, gear up for a lot of practice, and it's okay to practice. It's okay to get it wrong. 
because when you've noticed, hey, I didn't quite get that as good as I would have liked to have gotten it, you have a chance to make the next right choice by using that stress away, by resetting yourself, um, so you're not maxed out when you have those connections with people. So we get to choose how we see this season. And it has a huge positive potential. As you remember and reactivate and practice these new responses, potentially multiple times per day. So use the season to your advantage. This practice coming quickly back into peaceful alignment and joy um, is a huge opportunity that will serve you well throughout the rest of the year, not just during the holidays. So as you are balanced spiritually, physically, and emotionally, you will notice that all of your relationships will also be more balanced. First, your relationship with God, then with yourself, and finally with others too. So I just want to remind you that we are not victims of our lives and of these holidays. <laughs> we get to choose how, where, when, why, and with whom we spend them. We really do get a choice. Now, these three steps that we just went through, these three stepping stones, are the foundations of my Stepping Into Wellness class. And I'll be offering it again in February of 2024. Um, if you're wanting to go deeper about some of these things, or actually have accountability about using them and implementing them in your life, um, you can just you can comment step in the chat. You could reach out to me or to the person who invited you tonight, and I can get you some more information about um, how to start practicing these skills and how to join that group in February. Okay. Um, I'm going to check the chat really quick. And okay, Mar says add the vitality oils to the warm water. Great idea. And Becca said, yeah, I used to do that with the seeds vitality and maybe a little bit of cream and stevia. And that seemed to do the trick. So what a great strategy. Um, that would be a huge immune support. Your nice comfort, hot beverage, a little bit of thieves in it too, that would help that sore throat. Um, and we're actually at the perfect, perfect transition because the next thing that I wanted to talk about um, are some bonus holiday strategies for your sanity and joy. Okay. So your reset is to be very mindful of simple practices that we just talked about emotionally, physically, and spiritually. These are your bonus holiday strategies. Okay. Ready? Number one, thanks, Becca, for reminding us, thieves, all the thieves, all the thieves things, because we're supporting our immune system. Um, now, I like to put it on the bottom of my feet at bedtime, especially if I know I've been exposed to a bug at work or around family or wherever, or if I'm under additional stress or traveling, things that we common do during, commonly do during the holidays. It's a great time to just get that thieves on the bottom of my feet. I am also a huge proponent of these lozenges or cough drops. So if I'm out and about like church, grocery stores, meetings, et cetera, and I'm exposed to someone who appears to be sick, I just pop one in my mouth and I just sit on back, suck it on my lozenge because lozenges or cough drops, they don't offend other people. People are used to seeing, you know, people take care of themselves with a lozenge or a piece of gum. So I'm not offended, but I am I'm not offending others, but I am defending myself and my immune system. Um, and, and it also helps me <clears throat> just as I'm in that moment, I'm like, oh, man, they're hacking up a lung. How sick are they? Like it stops my stress response because I just popped it in and I'm good. I know that that's acting even as a barrier and an, imme an immediate immune um, booster. For me, and so it takes some of the stress out, which of course, if the stress is decreased, then there's also less chance that I'll get sick. So that's one of my go-to things. Okay, the next one is hard, but we all need to hear it, myself included. Okay, um, <clears throat> more than any other time of the year, we really, 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 really need to avoid refined sugar, okay? Now, I say that because you're probably not going to when you're at the holiday parties. And um, 
But if you will be very strict with yourself in other areas, then when you go to celebrate, um, you realize that, you know, it's not about eating sugar for the whole last two weeks of November and all four weeks of December, which, you know, it's not a, hey, kids eat free all day pass on eating sugar for six weeks. Um, no, the pass that you could choose to give yourself is for one meal or for one party. And that should be framed within the rest of your day of making good choices. So it's, again, it's not an all day buffet of sugar. It's just that time of year because sometimes I fall into the trap of telling myself, that, oh, it's just that time of year. It's just that time of year. No, it is not just that time of year. I can't do that. Otherwise, I get sick because I've, you know, set myself up for failure instead of success. So remember that the rest of your day, make good choices. The rest of your day, maybe cut back on your calories because you know that you're going to be, um, you know, indulging in some of those extras during the party. And if you blew it the day before, practice more self-restraint today and tomorrow and the next day. We get to do that again and again. Don't beat yourself up. Reset at the next meal, at the next day, okay? I'm not usually one to speak about sports and especially football, but this is what I've noticed about football, okay? When the ball is fumbled, they get a reset on the field. And when they reset, they just keep moving forward. But what if they, what would happen if they were like, oh, geez, we just lost five yards. How are we ever going to come back from this? Look, let's just, just load up in the bus. Let's just go home. What's the point? Um, oh, that would be game over. That would be just a forfeiture, no chance. But I would say that from outside looking in, the fans who adore them are thinking, probably thinking, like we have days when maybe we don't think as highly, but we're thinking, dude, it's just five yards. Like, you got this. Just come on back. Let's keep going. And what if we could begin to talk to ourselves that way too? If it was just one fumble, just one oops. Um, but if I fumble repeatedly, it's time to add a self-reflection question um, as a stop point. And any good coach would do that as well if that same fumble is happening over and over and over again. And at that point, it becomes a self-reflection of why did that happen? Why is it that every day I am attracted to sugar or to having extra calories or whatever? Was I too tired? Was I too rushed? Was I stretched too thin? What was the root cause of my oops or my fumble? Those can be really hard conversations to have with ourselves, but again, they're very valuable conversations to have with ourselves. And the holidays, because we are stretched so thin, really highlight other areas that really they're happening all year but they just get pushed to the forefront during the holidays because we're stressed. And so some of those coping mechanisms that we have in max out the bad coping mechanisms um, can end up maxed out during this season. But as some of you showed with the strategy and your scores on the stress assessment, um, it can also highlight some of our good strategies, new choices that we're making, that we're getting it right. Okay. Last, I want to encourage you um, to intentionally be involved in a positive community. A positive community can help you with mindset. They can help you to be firmly established in a daily wellness routine. Um, even in between these gatherings, helping you again to reset. Um, they may help you to notice. I told you that this is the time of year to become a noticer. They may help you to notice, oh, I'm getting this right, or, ooh, I'm really, I forgot about that. I need to get after that. Um, and, you know, one of the other things they can help you with is to keep a mindset of not, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this, but I get to do this. And that reframing of things of how you tell a story to yourself is really important. I get to gather with my friends and loved ones. Yes, there will be challenges. But I also know that this is a season and time that is unique, and I may not have these opportunities again. So I get to be here with these people. I get to 
to enjoy company with these people I may not have time with for the rest of the year. I get to take a break from my typical routine. I get a rest at a company party. Find what you can get to do in a situation, what you can enjoy in each setting. Now, I'm not talking about saying, oh, it's all positive, it's all just fine. But I am saying that we can help ourselves to notice the positive things because what you notice you will have more of in your life not because there's more of it just because you choose to notice it so as we choose to notice those positive things we're going to experience more of them so the other thing about intentionally being involved in a positive community um, is that despite all the challenges we might have this really is a life-changing opportunity for us to come together because i don't know if you notice but there's a lot of negativity in the world. And there's a lot of people that all they can see is negative. And it's hard. It's hard to get through life when you're surrounded by so much negativity. So I just want to encourage you, in order to tap into more joy, surround yourself with other people who are intentionally wanting to tap into that joy. And joy is really not about your circumstances. It's not about everything's perfect in my life. Because if it were, None of us would ever have joy. Joy is about learning that I'm okay, even if all that and all y'all are crazy. Like me, on my own, I got my three stepping stones and they are solid. I am solid. I am not perfect, but I'm moving in the right direction. I have where my sense of self is coming from and I'm okay. And then I can experience joy. So, oh, listen, it's about this community. It's about connecting and learning. So whoever invited you tonight, if there are things here that you want to work on, if you want accountability, these are the people to turn to. If you need extra resources or if there's something that I talked about tonight that you're like, Ruta Villa, what? What was that? Ask them. They're going to be happy to help you learn more about those things. Reclaiming your joy in the season is a whole list of things, but it's also just a simple set of things that we should be practicing all year long. And when we do, it really pays off when these high stress times come because they don't just come during the holiday season. They come throughout life. They say you're either coming out of a storm, going into a storm, or in between storms, but they're always coming. We're never storm free. Okay, weather patterns move, there's always something else coming. And some other opportunity to learn and grow and refine these abilities to remain connected and enjoy. So I hope you've been reminded tonight that for many of us, it, it is a list of new things, but it's not everything that you need to do at once. It's picking one thing. What do you want to work on next? What do you want to add next? And it's staying connected to the things that we already no, to best practice and doing better for ourselves and for those around us. Okay, so I want you to choose your change. Um, remember the crazy car, the ridiculous example? Um, <clears throat> okay, so in what ways have you just been sucking it up and holding that car crusher open during the holiday season? And just wonder even who have you been doing that for what or who might you need to say no to in order to start reclaiming your joy or what might you need to say yes to to getting some of your personal joy back now to reclaim joy the first person you have to say yes to is yourself and taking care of yourself and if at any point tonight you thought a daily pause, like twice daily for 10 minutes. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, um, yikes. Okay. It is really important that you take that time to pause and that you make you a priority, your emotions, your spiritual health. And if you thought 15 minutes to get outside and enjoy sunshine, ain't nobody got time for that. Yikes. <laughs> okay. You are what your body needs that. It's not a, I don't have time. It's that I don't have time to not do this. I can't not do this. I have to take care of myself. And some people say, well, that sounds selfish. But you know what? It's not. 
Um, Jesus himself told us in Mark 12, 31, love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. Do you see that? We can't even begin to love others well until we learn to love ourselves. So I have a couple more questions for you tonight. And you can unmute. Okay, Karen said yes. Such good reminders and places to start from. Oh, Cindy, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yep, choose with intentionality what you're going to say no to so that you can say yes to yourself. It's not it's saying yes to you um, and valuing and, and affirming yourself and that you, you are worth it. You are in this equation too. Okay, and God needs you because he's uniquely created you to do certain things that nobody else can do. And if you aren't saying no to certain things, you don't have the energy to say yes to the things that give you joy and that you are uniquely created to do. Okay, not that we don't sometimes have to do the hard things, but I'm saying that shouldn't be the primary theme throughout your entire life, your entire day. Okay, so unmute yourself or in the comments tonight. What piece of the lesson was most helpful for you tonight? Um, and in the way that it was helpful, like, what are you going to do first? Like, it was such a helpful thought. I am doing this right away. I'm doing it tonight. I'm doing it first thing tomorrow morning. What was the most helpful piece for you from tonight's lesson? So you did such an awesome job. Um, a lot of this, because I've, I've sat in many of your classes, has been a review for me. But one of the things that resonated probably the most um, that I can relate to and that I've been doing for a while now is, is the people that I surround myself with. Um, getting rid of those people that are drama magnets, those people that are yeah. drained. <laughs> And, and, and of course you can't get rid of everybody, but knowing what category they're in, you know, just, yeah. just come to the reality for me that every relationship is not reciprocal and you have to mm -hmm. know which ones are and which ones are not. And, and then when you need that reciprocity, make sure that you're, you're with the right group that's going to, you know, be there for you and, and, and feed you and, and uplift you. And so that that's something that I've been uh, coming to grips with for the past several months, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's a slow process for sure, Karen. And, you know, just this week, I read a little article that said something about if you pick up the phone, like if your phone is ringing or vibrating, I can't stand the ring. My phone's always on vibrate. Um, and you see the name of the person and your gut just goes, Ugh. Yeah. You're just kind of filled with dread. Like, notice, I'm telling you, there's power in noticing. Notice yeah. your body's response. Your body is telling you less of this person, less. I can't handle it right now. And it can be hard um, yeah. because some of those relationships are necessary relationships, and I totally get that. But notice and honor your body's response to those people. Um, I need less. Not, maybe it's not completely cut them out, but it's, I need less. So, yeah. Yeah. And Karen, you know what? That's so, that's so good, Karen. Um, I do agree. And it's for me setting boundaries, mm -hmm. setting boundaries. And that, that was a hard thing for me to do, but um, I, like you, I'm learning that those boundaries are important for my mental and all for everything right. so yeah it was if great we want great. the joy yes yeah. yeah because it's draining mm -hmm. can't be drained no more so there was one particular relationship that i had that i was noticing that that i just had this ugh, feeling and so um, the friendship had been very valuable to me at a certain season in life. And so it was one of those situations that, um, like, I was trying to still be very fully present with this person, but my body was not feeling it. 
<clears throat> and I realized that it was because they were kind of negative in their outlook. And it was at a time when I was um, had some other stressors going on. And so just their complaining and negativity, I just couldn't handle it. And so I actually decided to have a conversation with this person and tell them about how their negativity was was impacting me. And I thought, as I started contemplating that, I thought, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Number one, they'll stop <laughs> or be more aware or maybe like start to notice that about themselves and cut it off. Or they'll be really mad that I talked about it and then they'll go away. <laughs> so, either way, I win, right? So, so when um, win. <laughs> yes. So sometimes those conversations that we're afraid to have Actually, it could be a really good DTR <laughs> defining the relationship. Like, is our relationship strong enough to handle this conversation? Do you care enough about me that if I tell you how these interactions are impacting me, you're willing to shift? Or are you just so stuck in yourself and in your way of doing things that you don't care how it impacts other people that are around you? So you can gain some insights about the depth and quality of the people that are around you, too. And and yeah, you can naturally remove some people from your life. <laughs> okay. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? All right. This is LaFar's thing. Um, I just want to tell you I appreciate um everything you said. And um, like you, I start my pause time with uh yeah. Jesus Christ. And that has impacted me a lot. Uh, 2020, I had COVID. Mm -hmm. And I ended up staying in the hospital for like a whole month. I wasn't oh, wow. in the sick you, But between uh, God, Donna, my pastor, mm -hmm. all of them helped me with medication and everything. Now that you're saying what you're saying, you know, sometimes you get a little lackadaisical, which that's what I was doing. Yes. But through Christ, he kind of reminded me with this stuff that you were saying. Because although other things happened behind the COVID, it kind of made me a little bit depressed at times. So I was sure. kind of lackadaisical with stuff that I was supposed to be doing. I was good in therapy, good at home, doing everything I got to do. And then I found myself kind of dwindling and stopping, saying, oh, yeah. I can do it later. I got this. I ain't worried about it. But then you done reinforced it. I said, oh, well, he's directing my path again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, get back on it. <laughs> So, I mean, it's good to be reinforced. And like you said in February, I encourage you to just say, hey, keep, it, keep it on. If it's good, hey, you got to keep sharing because we do forget. We forget ourselves. We do. Yeah. During the holiday, as women in general, we forget because we always got to do something for somebody else. And I found myself yeah. doing that. And although I have limitations now, you know, the family ain't worried about it. They're like, okay, I need this. I need it. Use your brain. Use your brain. <laughs> Absolutely. So like, okay. So As thank I was you writing this. up these, you are so welcome. As I was writing up some of these reminders, I was like, okay, God, I hear you. Because <laughs> I need these reminders as much as anybody does. This is life. And we just have to keep having these reminders from each other, encouraging each other, and um, make the next right choice, right? So, yeah, that's what we can do. Okay, so Cindy said, identify my stressors and send them packing. I love it. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> um, um, Wendy, I think, has, has had to get off the call, but she said, taking the 10 minutes morning and night, being mindful and breathing, so I'm telling you, it is life changing. If you just think back through that whole list of things that can improve just by using that four, seven, eight breathing technique, um, it is powerful. It really is. Um, let's see. I'm missing anything else. 
Sometimes you have to let people go. It's true. Okay, I think that's it. Anybody else have any questions or anything that they want to share? Um, I just really want you to think about <laughs> Becca just made a theme drink instead of decaf. <laughs> um, the other sharing, other sharing tonight has been so good. It really has. Um, I just want you to think again about what is the one change that you're going to make as a result of listening to this class. Becca already did it. She went and made her thieves instead of her decaf coffee. Woo -woo. Okay, good job. Um, I want you to think about it. I want you to write it down. What We learned something the other day. I don't remember what the percentage was. If Donna remembers, maybe she'll put it in the comments. Um, I don't remember if we were like 75 more percent more likely. Karen, was that you who shared that stat? Um, if we write something down that we're X percentage more likely to do it, if it's actually written down. It was, that sounds it was like huge. a Donna like, thing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something well, Donna probably said. <laughs> sometimes you have stuff like that too. <laughs> yeah. 75, 80%. I don't know. But the point is, yeah. Write it down. Yeah. Because um, we're more likely to do it. And our brain remembers it when we write things down. Donna says 70% more likely. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> Coming through. See? Hey. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> um, I just want to remind, remind y'all um, to either, either pray, send positive thoughts, whatever it is that you do for our Donna tonight. Um, that she'll just have complete recovery and that she'll have good rest and um, that she will just be fully restored. She is such a blessing to our community. And I am very, very thankful for her friendship and for her leadership, as I'm sure all of you are as well. And um, so I just want to remind you um, to keep, keep her in your thoughts and prayers. She says you will forget 80% of what you don't write down. Yikes. <laughs> So there you go. Okay, write it down. All right, y'all. It is 717. This is last call for any comments, any questions. Going once. Going twice. All right, cousins. We can, Donna says, thanks so much for your prayers. Um, we are happy to share them. They're free. We can send them up for free. Sounds good that Amen. way. Amen. <laughs> okay. So you can unmute. You can say goodnight, cousins. And um, I didn't even introduce our leaders tonight. But, uh, you know, Karen, Becca, me, Donna, <laughs> Amy, who wasn't with us tonight. There you go. Closing comment. Chef Mar, everybody who is contributing tonight. Love you all. You are the best team in the world to work with. Um, so thankful for all of you. Ditto. I agree. You did a great job tonight, Rachel. Yes. Thanks so yes. much. Yes, good job, Rachel. Great Appreciate job, Rachel. It. Love you all. Bye, Love you guys. Bye, Love Love you. Cousins. Love Love you. Cousins. Talk to you later. Bye.